Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Creeps, Creatures, and Haunts. Oh my. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to ghost hunt and tips and tricks. Now there's going to be some similarities between this and a video we did about a year ago, which is an episode all about ghosting equipment. Yeah. Because we'll be talking about equipment, but this is more than just equipment specific. Yeah. More along the lines of just that, how to do it, things maybe not to do, and stuff like that. Yeah. We, we thought it would be interesting because we see a lot of things when we do like public investigations of people doing like some really weird things and, you know, <laughs> again, ghost hunting, paranormal is a suite of science as it is, so I don't know if there's necessarily wrong ways or right things, ways to do things, but us having gone to a lot of locations, Kim going, have been to even more you know, we've both been doing this for a long time. We thought we would just try and give some advice. Yeah. Before we get right into it, make sure, if you don't know, we have a Patreon. Go check that out. We have cool little perks, like you can get personalized cards from uh-huh. Kim and me here. We might get a picture. We might get some other stuff, depending on the tier you do. But the most important thing is it helps support us. Yes. That is the most important thing. You can also join our YouTube. We take a $5 a month membership. You get little stickers and stuff like that. We also have a merch store which I will insert some footage here. So if you like our logo, if you watch the videos and not just the podcast form, you know that we have a logo. It's a skull bob. Well, actually, on the podcast, it is the cover art of the podcast. So check out the merch store. And those links are always in the description of every video and podcast we have. So just check the description for links for that. But that being said, I guess we will just get right into it. I will let uh, Kim kick off our first topic here. Okay, so um, when you're going to a location, depending on where it's at and what time of the year it is and stuff like that you want to make sure you dress accordingly to where you're going so if you're going to a building that actually has heat you really don't have to like dress you know like put like a ton of clothes on and things like that um if you're going to a place that has no heat and it's you know november you might want to bundle up a little bit yeah this is definitely (laughs) something that i've made the mistake of i'm sure you've made the mistake of before and also if you're going to a location that has outside portions it might not be a terrible idea to i don't know pack a rain like pack a raincoat or something raincoat or boots yeah if you're going to someplace that's outside um like we actually investigated like the gretchen's lock area and stuff like that which is mostly i never dress appropriately for it (laughs) yeah we we're bad about that but um, <laughs> One of the most infamous times that I would say we did not dress appropriately is when we went to Ghost Hunt Indigo Lake in Cuyahoga Falls. Oh. oh. I didn't anticipate there being, like, all the mosquitoes in the world. Yeah, all the mosquitoes were there, and they were hungry. Yeah, we probably only investigated, in quotation marks, for, like, ten minutes there because yeah. we were being literally just eaten alive to the point where there's... When we got back to the car, I noticed that there was just blood all over my legs, <laughs> and I'm not sure if it was my blood or not. So, yeah, don't even think about that if you're going to a place. If you're in, like, spring, summer, whatever, then when the bugs really start coming out, make sure that you pack bug spray or wear long pants or even long sleeves it's maybe a thinner material or just something to keep the bugs off i just bought us a new can of bug spray by the way yeah that's good well you know it's getting warmer weather seems to help me much though it helps me i think it does well that's good (laughs) but yeah so more of the story is yeah just dress dress um, accordingly if it's gonna be warm then you know maybe wear layers maybe wear you know like a light jacket or something or maybe bring something extra and put it in the car because a lot of these places will allow you to go back to your car it's just once you leave the actual property they usually don't let you to come back so you know just bring some stuff with you if you think you need it yep it's always better to have more more than you need than not having what you need at all now, a big one that's a huge pet peeve of me and Kim's, and I can't believe how many people do this all the time, is when you're doing an EVP session, do not whisper. Ugh. And if you do, make sure to mention afterwards, I just whispered. Yes. Nothing irks me more than when I'm listening to an EVP session, and I think I caught something, and we'll like look over footage or somebody else's recorder, mm-hmm. and no, it's somebody else going, pss, 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 like that. Yeah. And it's like... Okay, well, I can throw right. that out now. Thanks. Which it is nice that me and Kim, since we do the Haunted Adventure series, we film most of it, so we can yeah. usually tell that kind of thing. But we still, a lot of times recorders are running even when the camera's not running, just yeah. because, you know, 
it's hard to go through all that footage and it takes up so much memory. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's a big thing, especially if you're with a group of people. So like if you're with someone and you hear them whisper and they don't tag it, make sure you mention it. Yeah. Or else you're going to get incidental false evidence essentially. Right. Um, some other good things, you know, when you're when you're doing the EVP is try not to move the recorder around. Leave, yeah. leave it still. Because I'll tell you what, surprisingly enough, like if you move the recorder around, it, it, you actually, it can sound like demons sometimes because you get like... Yeah, it, like, like, it's sound, like a yeah. weird scraping noise. Yeah, like it's, it's strange because I've noticed that like I sometimes, if I'm listening in and I'm doing a recorder, I'll have it in my hand and I have to make sure that yeah. I hold it completely still because if yeah, I don't, noise. you can hear everything like you could hear your finger go like rub it it's it's just craziness yeah so a lot of times i do like to like just set it somewhere and yeah just it's always like, preferred if you can set it down to set it down somewhere yeah. and using a re- and using a recorder that has a like strong mic as well so it's picking up mm-hmm. stuff you know it's better to you don't have to get a real expensive one but it's better to get one that's like at least thirty dollars you don't want to get yeah. the cheapest of the cheap yeah, just no. because it can interfere and not just tagging whispering but tag anything that might be misconstrued if you, know. you hear like traffic outside and it sounds like somebody's coming down the hallway or something but you're like no that's definitely a truck or you know someone's yes. playing loud music as their car is driving by just make sure you mention it on the recorder and be like oh hey there's some loud traffic going by i would dare man i would dare to say that i probably 90 percent of all evps that are caught are probably explainable away they were just noises that people didn't tag yeah. and you're there for hours if you're on like a big investigation like you're not going to remember it's not like you're purposefully no. doing stuff but you're not going to remember that someone might have whispered during this one time you might not even known or maybe cleared their throat or anything like that you know yeah even on farting farting really sounds like demons (laughs) and stomachs oh yes and stomachs (laughs) that's an actually you know what that's another uh, thing we don't have wrote down but honestly be mindful of what you eat before an investigation because most places you're going to be investigating unless you're doing unless you're like a local ghost hunting group that's doing privates um even then you probably don't want to blow up a private residential's bathroom. <laughs> but, like, when we investigate, like, Mansfield or something like that, like, they have bathrooms there, but you don't want to use them. And some of these places, the dilapidated buildings you might be ghost hunting, they're not even going to have restrooms. Yeah. The the one time we went to a place <laughs> and they literally had a bucket. Yeah, I knew you were going to talk about that. In a room. Like, it actually was the bathroom room, but there was no toilet. They literally just had a bucket. And one of our fellow investigators decided he needed to take a major mundo number two (laughs) in that said bucket it was like why why would you even think that that was okay right which i mean this was in like a bad part of cleveland where it's yeah it was the house of wills years ago because they still do investigations i don't know if they have Mm -hmm. i don't know if they have bathrooms there now but yeah i mean you just have to be really mindful of that and that's something that people might not think about before going to an investigation is you know, maybe don't eat the Chipotle. Maybe get something that's maybe get a salad, something that's filling, but that's not going to potentially yeah. um, mess you up. Although at the same time, my biggest my biggest thing is you start getting tired, and then you want to drink coffee or energy drinks, which are kind of like natural laxatives, mm. and so that can kind of be disruptive. So I guess just keep that in mind yeah. of the other restroom situation before you partake in something that might make things go on the move. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on to from that, um, we found that using props helps to stir up activity. By props, mm-hmm. I mean like if you're in a children's room, bring a doll, bring a ball, bring yep. some sort of toy for them to play with or to come near. Put it by your recorder or by your um, K2 meter yep. or whatever you have and be like, hey, can you come touch this doll? And if they come near the doll, they're going to be close to the, the you know the recorder. Maybe they could say something or they be close to the K2 meter and then the K2 might go off, you know, something like that. Um, They do make props that actually have those kind of meters in them. I wouldn't. They're super expensive. Yeah, I wouldn't go out and spend the money if you can just literally place a K two yeah. on a lap of a doll or a it's teddy the bear. Same thing. It's the same exact thing. Yeah, which there will be a link in the description if you're interested in purchasing equipment. We do have an affiliate link, which you know pays us very little, but something yeah. from Ghost Stop. 
Now, there are things that you can buy there that are really cool, but I don't know if I'd recommend buying the Boo, the boo Buddies is what I think they're called yeah. in Good Conscience because yeah. they're literally just a doll with a K2 meter built into Yeah, them. and, like, they do talk and kind of, like, try to, like, instigate yeah. questions if you're doing an EVP session and stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, you can do that yourself. And I guess that is something I actually would like to ask the audience as well. So there's a lot of, like, these gimmick ghost hunt things that I've seen like Boo Buddies is one another big gimmick one is it's a music box oh, that supposedly yeah. plays when I think it's motion is detected it's basically like a K2 is as it? well yeah when it gets close to it it detects that so it's, okay touching. so it's almost I think it's more like a REM pod almost yeah, where, yeah it just detects yeah. like um, when any kind of energy or motion just gets close to it and then it sets the music box off I don't personally see why that would be I mean, it's not like the ghost is physically, like, pulling the thing, but, I mean, maybe it's the same thing there. I feel like that's just more gimmicky, but they charge out the ass for these oh, things. Oh, yeah, they're very expensive. They're real expensive. I'm not sure how much that music box thing is. They're pretty expensive. I want to say 150 But I'm curious what you guys think of, like, the more gimmicky stuff. Do you think that stuff is actually effective, or is it really just them kind of running out of ideas? Because <laughs> my, my $3 cat ball. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, like, a way... <laughs> better way to spend your money like i could not there's some ghosting equipment that like r currently we don't have a rem pod which i would really like to get a rem yes. pod i just like them and we had that weird experience with it at madison seminary or no not madison seminary uh randolph county infirmary oh yeah where yeah you should go watch that you should go watch the episode but basically every time i entered a room it would go crazy but anyone else that would enter the room it, it would not go off yeah it really liked him for and i wasn't even close to like i was close to it when i crossed, crossed the threshold and I even uh, took off my phone, my watch, and it was already on airplane mode, which actually we'll get to that tip in a minute. Um, and still, even without any electronics on me, because I even I even gave my camera to someone else. Yeah. I took anything that could possibly be electronic off me, and it would still only go off when I crossed the threshold. Yeah, it and was then eventually weird. it ended. But yeah, yeah it was that really was strange. It really was strange. Really strange. But yeah, you know, use props, toys. She even has like cigarettes. Like if there's like a ghost that's rumored to like really like certain things yeah. maybe have it like as i don't know if i'd say offerings the right word but you know you'll see sometimes we go places to leave like dollar bills or something like yeah like coins or candy offering. cigarettes i know there's um a couple of spirits at hillview manor that if you leave them cigarettes they usually respond to that um if you're at a place that actually has native american spirits um it's actually suggested to bring them an offering and tobacco is a big time offering yeah. so you could bring them some tobacco which is cigarettes um you know anything to try to get the spirits to talk right because ideally you know i mean if you believe in ghosts you believe that they were once people yeah. and you want to bring them things that they would have liked in their lifetime yeah. to hopefully elicit a better response oh. Because just ask them to come touch a gray box with lights on it. If it's a kid spirit, for example, like, why would they want to touch that? Right. Like, so, yeah, put it by a toy. And that's, yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, another one, which we kind of touched on, this is kind of a simple one to know, but a lot of people don't do it, is to turn off your phone or put it in airplane mode while you're doing a session at the very least. Yeah. Mm now, mind you, there are apps that you can use on your phone. Yeah. But... I would have that at an appropriate time, like make sure you're not using anything else right. when you're doing that. Because um, like he, like Josh has um, Ovulus on his phone. Yeah, I don't believe it works, we'll but sometimes it. we'll use it. Yeah, yeah, we'll use it, but we'll make sure that we're away from like any kind of meters or anything like that. Because your phones will, anytime you get any kind of notification or even like scroll yeah. through it, it will turn off k2 meters and stuff like that so. yeah it'll sometimes it don't even have to be close like i forgot to throw mine in airplane mode when we were doing a session at um uh, well, the most recent place we just did fairfield and yeah i forgot to and like i wasn't even that close to it and it was like setting it off so mm -hmm. i didn't think it was my phone but then like you know we were able to basically debunk that it was yeah. and also if you have smartwatch that is also if it has cellular yeah uh, make sure you put that in airplane mode as well. And that's something that people forget to do a lot as well because they don't think about the fact that their watch is also receiving signals if it's a smartwatch. Yeah. So just make sure you turn that kind of stuff off and obviously silence anything. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the last thing you want is that blaring <laughs> during a session. Now, obviously, it's going to be not practical for most people to have these devices off during the whole thing. Right. But always, I would say, keep it in vibrate mode, even when you're not in, in the middle of a session. Mm -hmm. So that way you're not disrupting something that might happen or scaring the living hell out of people. Yeah. Nothing scares you more than when you're in a dark room and all of a sudden somebody's, like, 
ringtone goes off yeah. and it's playing like some creepy music or something and you're like well kim's here kim's here's ringtone is usually barbara ann and so it just bar 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 oh, and yeah, it's, it's just like and it always startles me yeah it's it's the it's the minion singing banana Oh, well, that well, it used to be the Barbara Ann thing, but yeah, now it's the banana. Yeah. So yeah, you always have like songs that tend to scare the crap out of me if your phone rings. Um, so the next one, I guess, is kind of interesting because it could go both ways. So there's merits to both of these things. Mm-hmm. So it is good to know the history of the place. Yes. Because that way you can call the spirits by name and hopefully elicit more of a response by mm-hmm. calling them directly as if, again, they were a person. Yes. Um, it also, I mean, I, I put it here, but you know, right. it's, it's weird because I like to use, um, like myself as like, kind of try to get a feel of things and stuff like that. And if you use like a psychic medium in your investigations and things like that, you might not want them to know the history of the place right. as well to get information. Um, but a lot of these places do have usually like a walkthrough, like a historical walkthrough of the place you're going. In like hot spots. Hot like. spots. You know, yeah, they'll tell you like, you know, this person burned alive in this corner. <laughs> and, Woo! Yeah, or this person jumped out this window, you know. So it's nice to have like names and places so you can go to that place and be like, hey, Jimmy, do you regret jumping out of this window? You know, you could ask that as your EVP session, you know. Um, And, I mean, it does help to get responses. So that way you actually know who you're talking to. But sometimes it can also be, because the power of influence is extremely Mm. strong with ghost hunting. So if you're in a room and you know that somebody named Jimmy, we'll use Kim's name there, Jimmy, died, and you're using, like, the ghost box and something goes, like that, you might hear Jimmy out of it. Because that's what you're expecting to hear. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more impressive if you go in blind and you hear Jimmy and then later on you find the history and you're like, oh, someone named Jimmy died in this room. Yeah. So that's another thing I think why it is a little a little side note. Take notes. Yeah. While you're there, have a notepad with you. And this is especially good for doing a ghost box session. Write down what you hear in what time frame. Yeah. And then when you listen back to it later, see if that's still what you hear. And it's also a good thing if, like, you're doing any kind of session, you may hear footsteps or something, write down the time, so that way when you're reviewing evidence later, it doesn't get as jumbled. Yeah. And that is something we aren't super good at, that we should probably start doing. Yeah. We don't do that too much. We used to, I feel. I, yeah, I used to do it, and then I just kind of got away from it, because then that required me to have, make sure I had a flashlight so I could write. Right, but usually that, now, but because we're now. filming, we usually have the room lit up a little bit. Yeah. Because I don't have a night vision camera, and I also just hate the way night vision cameras look. Yeah. Because my camera is... Um, Everybody looks great. Yeah. yeah, my camera's a decent camera. It doesn't have night vision, though, because it's a, you know, just a normal camera. And I'm like, I don't think that ghosts aren't going to appear just because there's a light on. That mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense if, no. you know, ghosts are just dead people. Like, I... Guess what? I do things when it's not completely dark. Actually, I usually do things when it's not completely yeah. dark. Yeah. Well, that that's another little um, off segue thing you don't have to ghost hunt when it's dark out no you don't it's more fun the only reason like yeah aesthetically it's it's spookier you know the atmosphere is great but the reason that most people ghost hunt at night is because it's quieter and you can hear more things because there's not all the hustle bustle people out and about going about their day working things like that It's the middle of the night. Most people are at home. They're asleep. It's quieter, so you can actually hear, you know, if someone says your name that's not really supposed to be there. Right, and that is a big big thing. Now, if you're uh, investigating a remote location, then it doesn't matter as much. But even, like, when we went to Fairfield, it was right by the road there. So in the day, the traffic, I mean, even at night, there was some traffic. But in the day, there's so much traffic. Oh, yeah. But at night it got better. So, I mean, that is kind of a plus there, I guess, is noise pollution is less likely. Yeah. But, yeah, you don't have to investigate at the night. Like, if you're trying to ease your way into it, ghost hunt in the day. Because, I mean, it is less freaky and your eyes are less likely to play tricks on you. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that is definitely... Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, definitely a thing. So, the next tip we have, and kind of want to elaborate on this a bit as well so we have don't go alone now some people do like to go alone but 
unless you're very experienced in it, it's not something I would recommend. Yeah. Especially not even because of the ghosts, but like, let's say you're going to some place like Gretchen's Lock is a great example. Yeah. Never go alone there. I don't care oh how gosh. experienced you are, and not just just because there's so many things that could happen to you back there. There's not good cell service. It's like perfect place for a horror movie. Oh, it is. And there's some sketchy people that sometimes hang out in those woods. <laughs> no one's ever tried to hurt us, but we have ran into some people that like have said some stuff that were drunk out of their minds, and because we were in groups, they didn't mess with us. But like. If I were alone or if someone else in the group were just there by themselves, then, you know, I don't know what would have happened for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, try not to go alone. And, I mean, there's there's, there's other reasons as well you probably wouldn't want to go alone. Um. Yeah, so, like, what it, like he elaborated, what if something happened to you? What if you got hurt? But what if you actually had a paranormal experience? Right. You'd want somebody else there to witness it. So that you would have two people. Because if you come back, say, from some place and be like, oh, my God, I saw a full body apparition. And you don't have any, like, video evidence or anything like that about it. Right. People aren't really going to believe you. If, unless there was somebody else. See, if we both came back and we were like, like, oh, my God, we both saw the same paranormal right. apparition appear in front of us. It was amazing. You know, it told us the meaning of life, everything. <laughs> People are more likely to believe us if there's two or more people right. saying the same exact thing at the same exact time. Yeah, exactly. Now, that doesn't mean you're always going to have the same experience when you go with someone. There's a mm-hmm. lot of times that one of us will see or hear something the other one didn't. Yes. Just because you have to be looking in a certain direction. And... Or, um, well, uh, for example, we went to Mansfield Reformatory and we were walking past a cell and one of us heard the sink running. Now, mind you, there's no running waters in any of the cells, and I don't even think there was actually a sink in this cell. Um, they heard running water like someone was washing their hands. The other person walked past, and they actually saw a figure standing there washing his hands. Oh, wow. But it was too, like, they, the other person didn't see the figure. They just heard the water. But the other person saw a figure doing this yeah. by the wall. That's that's always that's always unique when you have like a shared experience. Mm-hmm. It's not the related things, but they're not the same thing that yeah. the people are experiencing. That's yeah. always kind of interesting to me as as well. But yeah, I mean, if you do go to a place alone, make it be like a place like we interviewed him on the channel. It's been over a year now. Um, Zach Mo is his yeah. name, and he goes to a lot of places by himself. It's mainly like locations that you like rent out. So the odds of someone actually harming you are almost slim to none because yeah. you're kind of locked into this big building by yourself and that's 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 okay you're, you might get freaked out though like i said if you're in you, <laughs> you won't be able to have someone share your experience with you but at least it's not a safety concern yeah that's the main thing i would say is never do it if it's a safety concern yes and if you are doing it even if it doesn't seem like a safety concern just make sure you have your cell phone on you mm-hmm. so that way if something does happen you can call for help yes uh i want to actually talk about one thing here i was thinking about it. we don't have it on the list but i was thinking about it as we were kind of talking about um like the history of the haunted place and kind of talking about like psychic mediums and like feeling the energy is kind of know what headspace you're in when you go into this place yeah because for one not only the ghost but again as kim was saying you're going to have a tour and there's going to be terrible things you're going to hear and if you're already in a depressed state of mind it can really put you into a dark place. Yes. And I, again, I don't know how much of a believer I am, but, you know, it is very widely believed that if you are in a dark mental space and you are vulnerable, that dark entities can attach to you. Yeah. And they can really mess and feed off your energy. And not even that, but, like, actual, like, proven science, if you're already depressed and you're in a place that is depressing, it might kind of put you in a, in just, in a, yeah. in a bad state of mind. Yeah. And I think that's something that people don't really think about because take the ghosts out of it. You're hearing depressing stories. You're in probably a decaying building. I mean, like if you're in like an old insane asylum or something like just just looking at this stuff, because most of these places kind of go for kind of kind of go for theming a little bit where they'll put things like hospital beds or stuff. Yeah. You would see that. I mean, if it wasn't already left there and just kind of seeing that stuff might trigger something as well. So, like, for example, if you've had mental issues before and you've had to be in a place like that, oh. going to, like, a haunted place that's ran down and then hearing these stories might trigger something in you. Oh, yeah. So, just peop- – just for a lot of us, it is just fun, but just like anything in life, if there's things you're sensitive to, kind of try and find out 
what you're getting yourself into before you go there because the last thing you want to go there and basically have a panic attack because yes. it triggers something in you. Because this happened to one of our friends. She was in kind of a dark place and went ghost hunting. I don't mm-hmm. know one time and – you know, she believed that something basically attached itself to her. Yeah, yeah. And she, yeah, she kind of like stopped doing stuff after that for a while because of that reason. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, you really, yeah, you need to be in a good headspace in order to do this kind of stuff. So yeah, that is a very good. Yeah. And like, I know one thing that Kim likes to do a lot when we leave places is basically say, just in case, like, you know, you're not allowed to follow me or whatever mm-hmm. home, if you want to do like a little cleansing ritual after you're done you know whatever makes you feel better even if it's not actually doing anything per se if it makes you feel better mentally that's doing something enough you know that that makes it real enough regardless of what you believe yeah if you want to do like a clearing of yourself um a lot of these places don't allow you to do clearings of the actual locations right because it makes them less money if there's no ghosts um yeah just a little tip five below does sell sage (laughs) hilarious (laughs) They do have some, like, mystical things. They have rocks and all, all this other weird stuff. Um, but you can you can buy some sage and just light it and just kind of do a, a cleansing of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like Josh said, I always tell the spirits, you are not allowed to follow me home. You can stay here. You can go into the light. But you cannot come home with me. And it just gives me a peace of mind. Um, you can also visualize a white light surrounding yourself and saying that nothing else is allowed into this white light. Nothing negative, no- nothing other than, you know, if you have any, like, spirit persons that you think are, like, guides or anything, you know. You could say, you know, nobody but my guides are allowed in this light. Something like that. However you want to do it, it just kind of helps to visualize it. Just yeah. close your eyes. Just envision yourself in a white light and clear yourself, too. Um, but, yeah, be in a good be in a good place when you go to these places because yeah they're most of these places that are extremely haunted are dark yeah like we i've heard some of the worst stories i think i've ever heard in my life that going to these places off. like things i, I mean places, you know yeah. not limited to murder sexual abuse Ugh. assault just all kinds of horrible things and most of these places have a guide and if you are sensitive to hearing something specific because i know like sexual abuse Mm. Um, that's a big trigger for some people. So maybe like, look, maybe if there's stories like that here, maybe don't tell them to me or maybe t- let me know. So maybe I can go in a different room while the rest of the group yeah. hears the story. Yeah. Cause again, if you're there for the most part to have fun, to have a spooky night, to see what you can find, see if something wants to talk back to you, you don't necessarily need to have a full course, dark history lesson on a place. If you have a paranormal experience <laughs> oh, this is such a at big pet these peeve of places, mine. Don't freak out. Yeah. Try to stay as calm as possible. Right. Don't be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Just keep going. And this is my biggest annoyance of ghost shows. Oh my gosh. Because they'll be like, can you please knock for me? And then they actually get like a back and they just start screaming. screaming. It's like, imagine you a ghost or just imagine you a person, someone Someone, you're like, hey, can you can you answer this question for me? And they answer it, and you just start screaming because they did what you asked. <laughs> Why would you ever want to communicate with that person? Again, you wouldn't. I know. Why would a ghost want to communicate with someone that freaks out? No, I mean, it's different. I understand, like, if a door slams in your face or you hear, like, a growl behind you or get scratched. Okay, that's going to be hard not to freak out. Yeah. But if you're literally asking for just, like... A, a response. response. Yeah. Like, why would you just start screaming? And I mean, like, if you're new to it, I understand that it can be freaky when you actually get a response. But, like, try not to at least go hysterical, at the very <laughs> least. I don't, you know, I don't think that that's too much. Or if, if it is freaking you out too much, just leave the room and let and don't ruin the experience for everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you get too freaked out, then leave. Don't right. Don't ruin it for everybody else. Yeah. Um, so this is a controversial topic that, um, some people like to do and some people don't. Um, and, uh, I mean, it kind of depends on where you're at. I would recommend to do this, but, um, provoking. Yes. To get a response. Um, there's a right, there's an appropriate place and time to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a way to do it too. Yes. Like, if you're just swearing and saying profanities to something and be like, come on, ghost, 
do something to me. I don't think you're real or, you know, you got your little tiny t-shirt on and you're like, you know, trying to like get a response or something to scratch you and stuff like that. You're probably not going to get a response. Because again, why would you respond to someone if they're being mean to you? Yeah. Like, especially if you're a ghost that people can't see and someone's being mean to you, I wouldn't talk to them. No. Like, that doesn't make sense. The other thing is, too, you want to be respectful when you're in a place, especially if you're in a place that has, like, dark history and there's Mm -hmm. been some of these awful things we talked about. You wouldn't want to treat these people poorly. Yeah, like if They've you're... They've already had enough. Yeah, or like if you're talking to children. You're not right. going to be like, oh, I, little Billy, I don't think you exist. You're just a little piece of bleep, 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 you know. You don't want to be like that. No, you, you don't. You want to talk to Billy like he's a little kid, you know. And it, it's one thing, the only time that like, like provoking can be okay if it's supposed to be like, but you have to be careful, which we'll get to, but if it's like a spirit that is supposed to be mean or maybe slightly like demonic or something that's a bad entity of yeah. some sort, then provoking sometimes will actually, because they already have that headset, it's kind, of, it's kind of like, you know, if you're talking to like a bad person, where if you challenge them, they're more likely to respond to you because they don't yeah. want to be seen as lesser. Yes. But do be careful because sometimes you might get what you're asking for. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. don't ask for something to hurt you if you don't want to get hurt. Right. <laughs> so keep that in mind, you, you know, before you, you say that, because, you know, people like, you know, Zach from Ghost Adventures will sometimes ask for things and then he's so surprised when he gets a scratch and it's like, well... Well, you asked for you it. You literally like, asked you it to scratch you. literally ran up on the spirits and was like, you know what, hurt me. And they're like, okay. And you're like, oh my God. Like, So just don't ask for something you're not willing to have happen because even if you don't believe in this stuff and if it does happen to you, you know, just don't ask for something you're going to regret. I mean, I feel like that's pretty good life advice as well. <laughs> like, you know? It's pretty good life advice. Now, the next one, I think, kind of ties in a little bit to what we've said in, what we've said a little bit before, but it is trust your intuition. Yes. So if you're uncomfortable in a situation, if you're getting super bad vibes and you're feeling like the energy and the air around you is just suffocating you, leave. Yeah. Remove yourself from that situation and see if you feel better. In, 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 in the same way as well, in the opposite way, if you're starting to feel, you know, I really think that this particular place might be active right now, we mm-hmm. should check that out. You should. The worst that happens is it doesn't. But if something is calling you to somewhere, yeah. you yeah. should listen to it, you know? Yeah, and if you get a feeling to go someplace, do it. Right. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Like, and, and you know, you go in there, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. When we were at Fairfield County Infirmary, like, <laughs> I I was going to try and force myself to go back into this one awful room, the Borg, and the, <laughs> in the, I keep calling it the basement. It's not the basement. It's just the first floor, but it yeah. felt like a basement. It did feel like a basement. Because um, it really wasn't a basement, a true basement to this place. Not that I know of, at least. I don't think there was a true basement. If there was, I didn't know how to get to it. Yeah. Um, but I just was like, I trust my intuition, I guess. And I was just like, yeah, I don't want to go in there. <laughs> I don't I don't blame you at all. That place was... It was it weird. It was really weird. And it's kind of funny because I kept hearing... We didn't talk about this before because I, I didn't know about it before. And, like, the podcast or anything. But I kept hearing, like, voices and scratching or some noises from the cooler that we couldn't get back open. If you watch the video, you'll see that. And then I watched, like, a YouTube video of other people being there. And they described hearing like, voices and scratching from the same cooler. Um, and it just kind of gave me chills because I'm like, oh, that kind of validated what I yeah. thought I was hearing a little bit. Since other people heard, like, pretty much exactly what I had described. So that's interesting. That's another thing, you know, if you're if you're watching like ghost shows and stuff before you go, I mean maybe watch like one or another history, but I'd also watch them afterwards. I would recommend doing that to kind of validate the experience, to see if there's any shared experiences there. Because it is really cool to find out that someone had the same experience as you. It does it feel makes you feel validated. You're like you're like, yeah. I'm not crazy, that that's a thing that happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you're got all your equipment and you're like, you know, packing up all your stuff or whatever. And you want to make sure if it yeah. requires a battery, you bring extra. Just bring all the batteries Just you bring can them all. of all Just, kinds yeah. because something will die, be it supernatural drain your batteries or just because batteries are batteries like yes. something will die on you so just bring as many as you can that's i bring like six camera batteries with me and we have like yeah a plethora we have like a whole baggie full of uh double and triple a's that we yeah. bring with us because that's happened to us so many times mm-hmm. make sure if you have any things that take freaking nine volts you have a nine volt or two as oh well because randomly something will in ghost hunting like i think the k2 is a nine volt for example 
Yes. And that's another thing. Yeah. Bring little screwdrivers too because sometimes you need yeah. little screwdrivers to open those things. Yes. I have in my ghost hunting kit, I have actually a little screwdriver set because of that reason because, yeah. yeah, the K2s have little screw things on there. There's a couple other little things that have screwdriver, like screws yeah. on them. It's like, it, it's a pain in the butt, but you know what? Right. I'd rather be prepared. <laughs> but this, I feel like, was a good amount of, like, tips and tricks to talk about. I feel like there's still more that we could talk about. If you like this, let us know. Yeah. Maybe we'll make a part two. Also, would you like a part two of ghosting equipment? Because there's still a lot of ghosting equipment that we didn't talk about. Mm -hmm. And we could also go over, like, because, again, this was more focused on just ghost hunting itself. We mentioned equipment here and there. But yeah. it was more about just the overall ghost hunting. Because, again, as we said in the equipment video... You don't really need anything fancy, just as long as you have a flashlight and a voice recorder. Like, that's really all you really need. Yeah. Like, some of the other stuff is cool, like a K2. And these are all things that, like, you can kit yourself up for under $100 for these things. Mm -hmm. And then if you end up really liking it, just like any hoppies, you can slowly grow your arsenal of things you want to use. But, yes, thank you very much for watching and listening. And, again, let us know if you like this so we continue to make this type of content or what you would like us to make in the future. And we will try and make that type of content. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, and also make sure you ring that notification bell so you know when we have future videos. If you're just listening to in podcast form, make sure you subscribe and please leave us a five-star review. Helps us out a lot. And as mentioned earlier, we have a Patreon. If you want to join that, you can get those perks and help support us. It is super, super, uber greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh!